today we have another sent in for repair box opening and this should be another KLH model 20 record player and I think this one actually still has a turntable with it the one I got going previously the owner had pulled the turntable out and restored it himself and I just did the electronics so let's pop this open and see what's inside well, people are listening to me when I tell them to pack things uh, to be dropped from five feet. Wow, this is actually the whole entire thing. And it looks like the turntable has shifted off of its... If any damage was done. These are really, really good turntables. Uh, a bit of a cult following, but well deserved. And they have a they have a couple uh, chronic problems, which are um, the the RF amp. These are all germanium transistors, even the outputs. The RF amp goes bad in the front end of the tuner and he said that he turned it on and there was a loud buzzing and then a pop and then nothing. So uh, that to me initially sounds like a shorted output transistor and then a blown fuse. But let's not assume anything. Got a Gerard changer here. Looks like the tone arm stayed in place, that's good. Now this right here, besides the germanium issue, this is the creme de la creme of portable record players. This thing is, is just the way to go. FM stereo, true multiplex decoder, Gerard changer, uh, uh, direct coupled output. Now it is coupled to a capacitor, that's right. But this is the this is the way to go. And I wish he hadn't sent it in this wood case because this was just a lot of unnecessary weight could have kept the wood the wood case at home and just sent me this this thing in here anyway uh, let me see if I can do something with it hey it got the changer out boy this is one of the best lubricated changers I've seen this thing just wants to roll on Now we've been through these before and the last one I, I had, these are the output capacitors that couple the, uh, couple the audio to the speakers. The last one, and there's videos on it, in fact this one has diff all different electrolytics than the last one. This one the last one had axial, uh, let's see, there's radial and axial, I don't know. The ones that both of them stick out of one side. It had those type of capacitors in it. And they weren't these black ones here. In fact, this all looks different. Look at these two capacitors here. This black one, and this is a black one with a red top. Over here, this is this, these are different types of capacitors. Well, that's interesting. Uh, there's a fuse right here.
Oh, it ha this one has that fuse bridge thing too, where you just stack the fuses because because you can't because the old one is hard soldered in there with wires. It's pigtailed. They make these little couplers where you just stick this over the one that's in there and then put another fuse in it. And this fuse is no, it's blown. It's definitely blown. So, that's blown. It's got a schematic on the bottom and it almost looks like it it sits on one of those kind of space agey post pole mount things. Somebody really like think that engraving their number on the bottom of it was going to Ah, whatever. So I find it amusing that you, you have this high-end unit, right? And then you have these crappy capacitors just, you know, floating in the wind. Like one of those bobbing head dog things that people have on their dashboard. Jiggling capacitors. So the way this is put together is there's screws kind of toe screwed in here at an angle and so this should come out and then all these little blocks of wood these shims should come out and then it should fall apart hopefully okay the 45 adapter was in this contraption here this block was up at the top. There are two blocks that go at the bottom. You know what, I better get a Sharpie and mark these because I want everything just to go back in the same spot. For future reference, this is what we need right here when we're restoring one of these. We don't need that. And it's no big deal. Um, this is what we're interested in though. What is shorted in here? That is, see I, I, I tend to think that this stuff might have been done in shipping. Uh, all these little felt pads were all down in the bottom. I've actually got felt pads. They're called furniture feet. But, um, yeah, I think some damage was done in shipping. This is no longer in the middle, and it's the, the meter is no longer square in the holder here. I don't care who it is, FedEx, Postal Service, UPS, they're going to drop them, they're going to throw them, they're going to bang them. There you go, how's that? I believe this uses a magnetic cartridge. I gotta be honest, even though I have a nice 1200 with a nice needle and cartridge and I think the Techniques 1200 is just the most robust, almost mil-spec record player that was ever made. Uh, you know, and it doesn't matter what you do to it, it keeps going. I wouldn't mind having one of these KLHs. This is, this is a really, really nice um, piece of gear. This is a really nice piece of kit. Taking a look at the output, and these output transistors are germaniums. Um, those look like the originals, the RCAs. These look like a replacement. And these very well could be a silicon output. Um, you can upgrade to silicon and rebias. I have done that before, and I have videos on how to do that. It's time consuming and a pain in the butt, but you know these this it's just weird how it almost looks like 
one of these boards is, was changed with the different capacitors on it. Very odd. Okay, well the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these transistors out. They are socketed. And I'm going to check them on my meter. I guess whoever did this did not think it was necessary to put any heat sink compound on it. Forward base to collector getting 0.113 volts so it's definitely germanium. If it was silicon it'd be half a volt or between 0.5 and 0.6. Emitter to base I'm getting 0.118 now this is where germaniums get a little bit baffling with the diode check because you check it emitter to collector on a silicon it should be completely open but sometimes on a germanium they're not so on this one emitter to collector I'm getting point z almost a short but I'm not getting a short with the wires reversed Checking the other one, I'm getting the same thing, so I'm going to assume it's okay. You can tell this one is original because it's got the heat sink grease on it. Now this one is shorted. 0 0.002 volts in that direction, I'll flip the leads. 0 0.002 in the other direction. This one is shorted. Same thing on this one dead shorted. So both RCAs are shorted. I was curious if maybe these capacitors were shorted and it's taking a charge actually kinda slowly. Check the other one. Yeah the other one's not shorted. Do we rebias and go with silicon or do we um, look for a Russian alternative, a USSR. These transistors, the germanium replacements of these, NTE makes them, NTE's kind of garbagey. Uh, they're extremely expensive. I want to say they're $60 each. Something like that, $30 each. They're uh, very pricey for the um, germanium power transistors TO3 package I did the dim bulb test with the uh, across the fuse with the bad shorted transistors out That would blow the transistors up right there. I guess that's a dirty uh, condenser in there. And on the chopping block today, we have Def Leppard Pyromania. Let's see if we can destroy this. Well. Obviously the vocals are in the other channel.
That's weird. With it in mono over here, it sounds like left minus right. Alright, so we need to recap the record player and lube the uh, lube the power supply. So we got two shorted germaniums. The rest of it looks like it works. The record player doesn't seem to work. Uh, I mean, it kind of works. The automatic part doesn't work. The uh, tuning capacitor for the FM is extremely dirty. Doing a little experiment on the KLH. I got the Variac and what I'm doing is I'm turning it up. I have this across the fuse and I bring the Variac up. And my plan what my plan to do is is to take the transistors and put them in the, the good transistors and stick them in the other channel and see if the driver stage is okay for that. And so what I'm doing is I'm bringing this up, bringing the Variac up. This is AC milliamps. So we start to hear some noise at 15 milliamps. And at 30 three milliamps or so we we actually get clean music so uh, in your head the zombie so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these transistors and stick them in this side and bring it up I don't want to I don't want to ruin these because what can happen is these drivers can short. Okay, I've moved the good transistors to this side. Here we go. All right. I don't want to cremate these. It doesn't sound right. Me no likey. Uh, that's no good. So I'm going to assume that something shorted over here. So basically this gets its biasing and everything from right here. This module drives this. This my amp module drives this. So not a good look. Let's get a couple video and a couple pictures how all of this is connected together because I'm most likely gonna have to pull it out. Um, just trying to get the owner an accurate idea of what all's wrong with it just to take it to make it work good. I've, I've been looking into Russian germanium transistors and there's a lot of options there. The only difference is, is the form factor and, and there's actually some transistors they are relatively cheap and they're made in the late 90s and they're mil spec for whatever Russian mil spec is worth. Um, the, the, the trouble is mounting them because they are totally different. 
but they're so robust that they would they'd blow the power supply up before they shorted I mean some of them are good for 100 amps no way that they would uh, well I guess if they got whacked with the wrong voltage they could still blow through and short Back on the back of the heat sink, you can probably see them over here. There's two emitter resistors. The square uh, things right there. There's one right there. 0.27 ohms, like a quarter of an ohm. Well, there's one back here, back behind the power transformer. Let's see if I can get that thing. It's right there. And... It is open. It was blown open when the transistor shorted. So that that could be that could be the problem with our. Uh, well, I guess I could uh, jump one in there and see if our um, see if our uh, uh, thing cleans up. Okay, we were very lucky. I was wrong. It's not the drivers, it's that resistor. Watch this. Okay, so we seem to be working fairly well here. It looks like we just need to get this thing up and running. We just need two transistors, which are the hard part, and a fuse and a resistor so far. The caps seem really good. Um, that's not saying that one of them can't just instantly short, but they seem really good. There's no hum. Uh, left and right channel seem to be working well, so I don't know what to say about that. They probably should be replaced. But this is a lot of work to recap this, a lot of hours. I think it took me two or three hours just to recap this one board the la in the last one of these. So, um, something. These are the Russian germanium transistors, and I just thought I would give you an idea of what the form factor is. These are um, mil spec, and they're from the 80s. So that kind of gives you an idea of. of um, what the Russian stuff looks like and these actually spec out much better than the ones that were in there. The ones that were in there um, spec out at I think 4 kilohertz and these go up to like 5 megahertz or something as far as the bandwidth goes so it's just how do you put it in there that's the thing Went over to the electronics store because I'm still trying to weigh my options on these output transistors. This is the NTE replacement. And this is germanium matched pair. And this is actually would be the drop-in replacement. Um, this is... Uh, $69 for this, plus tax, $69 for this. So you're looking at uh, $75, bucks, something like that, for the output transistors. I talked to the owner. He's not really concerned about what it looks like on the inside. He just wants 
something that works. It's going to be used mostly for background music. Um, so we're still weighing our option on these transistors. I, if these were silicon and I knew for a fact that this thing was good, then I would uh, drop them right in and, and shoot it down the road and let him spend the $69 on it. But since I'm not, since these are old and they're organic, they could fail too. That's, I'm more interested in the Russian ones because they, they're newer. And I've heard people say that the Russian transistors are junk. I don't think so. That's not my experience with it. Um, I picked up some .27s and I got some capacitors and fuses and I just picked up a couple tools because all of mine uh, have been broken. So, I, I know the guy well enough to wear, oh and this was the last pack he had. Um, to where I, I, I could bring these, I'll probably end up taking them back unopened. Okay, I changed the uh, the uh, resistor right there, it is, and I'm experimenting with these different transistors and I got to say, it doesn't sound right. The biasing isn't right with the Russian stuff. Um, is going on right now in Kiev, downtown LA. Just going to Kiev, downtown LA, and tell me your partner, Big Boy, sent you and asked for it. Big of course, every time I, you know, I, I get something where you can hear the distortion, it, it goes to commercials. You got a husband who loves you. You need to give him your quality time. You got the number. Okay, I'm going to change to the other transistor. It's even worse with this one. Now granted, I'm still on low voltage here, I'm still over only on 55 volts, but you can hear that they sound different, so... Uh, unfortunately, I think the easiest route is going to be... Now that might clear up if I change both of them. Let me think about that. Do I want to try that? This is two Russian geraniums. That's one there and one there. Definitely a biasing issue. I could try and go up on the Variac. <laughs> it's not three five Katie. It's your girl Cece, the mom and Cece. Shout out to Kid Passion in the studio with me. We're talking about shopping, man. Woo! What's our favorite store? Ross. <laughs> you know we have a budget. Listen, hit me up for request three two three five two zero five three two nine. Who shot ya? Come on. Some things make this type of music sound better, and lack of bias on the transistors is one of them. These are definitely an option, these orange ones, but they're not ideal. You can adjust the bias here. And I get it cranked up quite a bit. I feel the need to destroy this song right now with a little bit of unbiased distortion right now. Let's go. So on the transistors, I ended up just going with the NTE-121 matched pair. Uh, I could have done the Russian, I could use the Russian if I cranked this bias pod up all the way 
they actually sound about the same pretty good but then I got to deal with the mounting issue and I didn't want to spend all that time to deal with that so right now I just uh, decided that we would go with the actual correct part since they were available like I said the the electronic store this was the last set so uh, pretty much these things are at their end of the line so the Russians are probably going to be the only alternative in the future you actually can rebias for silicon transistors it's a little bit more difficult with this because it uses germanium drivers the ones that are easier to rebias are the ones that use transformers a driver transformer um, but this is because this is germanium driver actually it's got an NPN silicon driver and a PNP germanium driver and I just didn't want to spend the time I actually really don't have the time right now to try and figure it out and then have the risk of it being fragile and shorting or something so we just went with with what we could do at the price that it was just have to deal with it gotta pay to play right Here's taking a look inside the FM tuner, and this is rather interesting. You take a look at this and you would say to yourself, well, how is it that this can be scratchy with this type of gap? But I look at it under a really good magnifying glass, and there are whiskers on the silver plate, the plate that rotates, there are little tiny tin whiskers that are brushing up against the copper plate. Uh, very fascinating. Here's the uh, must be the RF amp, uh, the oscillator, and the mixer. So I think a good blowjob with the air hose ought to clean that up. That is very interesting. I'm going to just give this a rather forceful BJ here. Um, going to try and get all of these whiskers off of these plates. And I'm going to put some glasses on. All I need is one of these microfine whiskers in my uh, eyes. And I'm also going to put the camera aside and put a towel over it because I don't want the whiskers in the camera. Tuners all back together. We're at 88. Let's give it a try. Long ago, but when you see those pop images, covers of magazine. Upon the rock endured his ship. If you remember, if you watched my video on the um, uh, what do you call it, the uh, Silvertone stereo, you you will see. I don't know if that video is even out yet. Where is the FM stereo indicator? Anyway, you will see when I adjust the FM discriminator, you'll see the positive and negative swing in the alignment video. This meter indicates the same thing, so you want to center this out. That's basically indicates zero volts on the uh, on the detector output. Storm. Estoy transmitiendo.
There's channel uh, TV broadcast channel six right there. La gran... So that worked very well cleaning the plates. Now I, you got to be very careful, of course, when you do that, that you hit the plates straight on with the air because you'll bend them. And I would be reluctant to do it with an AM tuning capacitor because the plates are so much closer together and so much thinner. But that worked very well for this application. Now I was looking at why the reject didn't work and this is the the thing and basically you can see where that hits that but it's spring loaded there and I noticed that pushing this in is real sticky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, you can see there I can barely So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and see what, where the grease is that's dry or what's causing that to bind. Because if I manually push it in with my finger, it actually works. So I've got... Uh, plenty of grease here. No problem with that. All right, so what that little lever does is it, it pushes this thing right here. And boy, is it frozen. So I gotta take this apart. All right, well the dry grease is in here and in here because this very difficult. And I had to heat this up with a heat gun to get this apart. So I'm taking my time and I'm cleaning everything with brake parts cleaner and I'm using just a little dab of this grease and boy look at that. Could hardly move that before and this thing was so frozen to the stud there that it was turning the stud. Now it's all cleaned up and it rotates very easily so this this grease is pain. I think this is gonna be okay. It was, the edge was glazed. I cleaned it up with a little brake parts cleaner. Took the glazing off. Um, seems like it's gonna be much better now. Took the motor apart, oiled it. This thing is, everything here now is, is cleaned and lubricated and um, I gotta still clean this off, but uh, we are moving smooth now. I expect this thing to be fully functional. Look at this thing now. Well, I kind of think we need to service that switch. Let's try this well-oiled machine. because I have a light bulb in series with the fuse. As a safety. So I'm running it on reduced voltage. That's why when you crank it up, the amp draws current and the motor slows down. Let me bypass the light bulb.
Well, that seems like that needs a little bit of work. Could probably test clean this record. need to adjust where this thing sets down. Um, that screw right there is what adjusts this whole thing and that screw is very sensitive. A quarter turn uh, makes it a huge difference and this brush gets in the way. I'm sick of it. I've had my fill. You know, I have no idea what this is. This is 